Hey guys, so I am here sitting at the airport and I am doing my first video on this surface that I've got. So we're going to give it a try and we'll uh, try to give you a little bit more instruction. Okay, so in our last video we talked a little bit about um, our match pairs testing, how that was dependent samples because the two samples had a link between them. Namely, like we were doing twin studies, the, the DNA between the two twins was considered the link. Now we're going to talk about if we do two independent samples. So we've got actually two different types that, that we can do. We can have ones that have equal variances and we have unequal variances. Now if we go and look actually at our uh, at our flow chart again, we can actually see um, uh, see our pathway to get down here. You know, we first ask ourselves, do we have um, what type of data that we're dealing with? So this is dealing with, this is for our means. So we're first dealing with our means. We're dealing with multiple samples. We still have to check our, our requirements for normality. So we still remember for each of these, N1 and N2 need to be greater than 30. That's true for unequal variances too. N1 and N2 have to be greater than 30 if they are not normally distributed. Now, if the populations are normally distributed, we don't have to worry about our minimum sample size. Okay, now, if we want to say equal variances, this is either going to be given to us in our word problem. Sometimes the problem will just literally say, hey, we have reason to believe that the, that the two distributions for our two populations have equal variances. Now if that's the case, then we immediately get to go down our equal variances route. But if not, we might have to go down our unequal variances. Well, there's a really easy check that, that we can do. So when we look at our summaries, we can actually see like our X bar, we'll see our S, and we can see the sample size of one, and we'll like have X bar two, S2 and N2. Now with each of those, if we want to use the equal variances, we can actually check our sample standard deviations. And if the sample standard deviation, the big one, is less than or equal to two times the standard deviation that is small, we can say, hey, our sample standard deviations are close enough together that we can actually just assume equal variances. And we want to, when we can, use the equal variances. Now if we have unequal variances, that's fine. We just have another method of going and calculating. And the kind of some of the differences between them is there's different, the, the test statistic equation uh, are a little bit different. And the, uh, Oh, the ways that we calculate the degrees of freedom are a little bit, but our conclusions that we make from them are basically the same. So let me go ahead and... Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our roadmap and kind of see how we would get to these decisions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Prezi. We can kind of see what we're dealing with here. So, first things first, we're dealing with what am I testing? And let's see if I can't zoom in just a little bit. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. So our first question is always just this of how many am I testing? And we're going to go ahead and come down this numerical data and means. And then it's how many am I testing? Right now we're dealing with two samples in two different uh, populations that we're looking at it. The next thing that we're asking is, is it normal? So check it out. We still have to do this check for that N1 and N2 have to be greater than 30 or the original population says it's normal. All right, so if we can get to that point, we can then come down and instead ask, Okay, are they independent samples or is this match pairs? If it's match pairs, it's dependent, and we go down and do these equations. Or it says, does each group have the same standard deviation? If it says so, that means that we have uh, 
equals standard deviations, or you know, if sigma one equals sigma two, or if we do our check to see if the big standard sample standard deviation is less than or equal to two times the small sample standard deviation, then we can go down here. Now, if you notice, these equations are actually uh, quite large. Let's see if I can't zoom in on them a little bit. So they're kind of large and they're kind of complicated. Um, if you notice. The two sample tests, we have this big equation to calculate out the degrees of freedom. Our, the confidence interval equation gets a little bit bloated. Um, and then if we come over here, we have to find this pooled uh, standard deviation since we say that the population standard deviations are equal. A anyhow, so it gets a little complicated, but what's really nice is I'm going to show you how to do it in software. And literally the difference between these two is one button click and our commander will take care of these calculations for you. So let's go ahead and get out of here. And so that, that's kind of the differences between our two independent samples, how we can get to our means. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me.